welcome back to my YouTube channel. It is the last day of June. For some reason, I keep wanting to say like it's the last day of May. And it's like, no, we've already been there, done that. So what I have been doing on the last day of every month is recapping what I read that month. And in May, I was having so many issues with like my work and I was not really reading that much. So I felt like I did not have that many books to report on. But I got my act together for June and actually have eight books to share with you. Um, coming at you, oh natural, no special filters, didn't even do try for a cool background. I'm just in my kitchen. Um, but anyways, that is sort of how things are going around here. So I will just um, jump right in. I'm like looking, honestly, most of, a lot of these were audiobooks, but I also bought myself a Nook which I know is like literally the nook I bought came out in 2017. Like I know um, it's nothing new, but I was using my iPad to read eBooks on and I did not, I know that you can't really take that to the pool or like outside. And I, um, my iPad is not within reach, but it really is like a little bit too heavy to hold with one hand. So I got the nook and actually a couple of these books I read on the Nook. I love taking it outside and it's so durable. Um, it's a little glitchy, not gonna lie, but overall worth the money. So let's jump into it. Um, the first book that I read this month, I was reading it when I did the video at the end of May. It's called Crying in H Mart uh, by Michelle Zahner. This is what the cover looks like. Um, it actually recently, it like just came out this year, I want to say in April. Let me look. It is a memoir, it doesn't say on here when it came out, but I think it came out like in April. Um, I loved this book. This honestly is probably the best book that I read in the month of June. Um, it is a book on grief. Um, Michelle, I listened to the audio version and it is read by the author, which I always think is helpful. Um, it's really about Michelle losing her mom to cancer, trigger warning if that is something that is troublesome for you. Um, normally any book with a terminally ill parent is very difficult for me, but I'm getting better. Um, I lost my dad to cancer a little more than three years ago and it's interesting the pieces that I can read and be okay with and interesting the pieces that really are triggering to me. Sometimes I mean, this book, I knew it was about that, so maybe that's part of it was, like, I was able to, like, make the decision myself of, like, is am I going to read this or not? And obviously, um, Michelle is someone who's gone through it, so she is sympathetic um, to those feelings. It, it's beautifully written. It's also just, of course, aside from just being about loss, it's a lot about just... Um, the relationship she had with her mom and like the culture their culture and like the food that her mom would make and how she's like trying to learn the food and as a foodie like that was just a very sweet um, part of the book and but I loved it so much I'm gonna try not to ramble on the next book um, I listened to was City of Girls by Elizabeth Gilbert um, Elizabeth Gilbert is known for her nonfiction work, um, like Big Magic, um, I'm so sorry, I'm like about to sneeze. Shoo, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I think Big Magic is the big one. I know she wrote Eat, Pray, Love. Um, I thought that that was nonfiction yes eat pray love um <laughs> sorry this is so embarrassing so she wrote um city of girls gosh i want to say um it, it it hasn't been out maybe like last year or so maybe two years ago but it's about a like New York City showgirl um, looking back on her life and it's like written as a letter to I believe her granddaughter. Um, 
Um, so it's like this showgirl, like an authentic showgirl looking back on her life and like looking back on her life in the 1940s. So there were parts of it where I was like, what the hell? Because basically she was like a prostitute and like lived in a house with other prostitutes. Um, so a few parts of it, I was like, what am I listening to? But overall, it was like, I don't want to say a cute story. Um, it has an average of four stars on Goodreads. I gave it three. Like it was interesting to listen to. Like it was entertaining, but like, I don't think I would recommend this book. I wouldn't know who to recommend this book. I guess someone who likes books set in the 1940s or likes that kind of like showtime New York vibe. I don't know. There was just a few, definitely if you are triggered by like, um, if, like open door sex scenes, this probably is not for you. Um, there were some weird descriptions of that. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. The next book I read is She Come By It Natural, Dolly Parton and the Women Who Lived Her Songs by Sarah Smarsh. This is actually a book that I have a physical copy of, but I was like, probably never going to get around to reading. I was like, I'm never going to read again. Um, so I listened to it um, on the audio. It's not very long. I think it was like five hours. It's really um, kind of a report. Like, it's not like dry, but it's more of like a journalistic uh, writing style about Sarah Smarsh and like, her experience with like the women who live country music like the things that are sung about in country music and like how those how her and like the people that she know have been able to relate to country music and like where Dolly Parton fits in and all that and there's it's not a biography of Dolly Parton which I think I kind of thought when I bought it um but it's like Kind of a little bit about Dolly Parton's life, a lot about her music career, and a lot about, like, her, her charitable donations and, like, just, like, kind of the path that she's paved for women and women in country music, um, that sort of thing. It's an interesting book. I gave it three stars. Um, it was not life-changing. It wasn't like, oh, I can't wait to listen to this or, oh, I can't put it down, but... It was definitely well researched if you're a Dolly Parton fan, if you're a country music fan. There's a lot of like little tidbits in there just about country music. So in general, pretty good. I'm so sorry that I keep sniffling. Um, the next book that I listened to is was actually really cute. It's like a middle grade novel, which I've only read a few of them. Excuse me. I definitely have a zit like on the end of my nose like in the cartilage and it hurts so bad um anyway the book was dress coded by Carrie Firestone cover so cute um I just saw this like when I'm looking for audiobooks at the library I just look and see what's available right now and just scroll through and see like what looks interesting and I saw this and I was like okay I'll listen to it and it was cute so it's about um an eighth grader that has started a podcast called Dress Coded and she is basically like fed up with the dress code at their school and so she uses her podcast to like interview other girls because it's only girls that are getting in trouble for the dress code so she interviews other girls who have been dress coded who have been you know taken into the principal's office for something they're wearing and like she asks them about how they feel and like their plan is to like ultimately do away with the dress code and stop making it so sexist sexist um and so they like plan to go to the like pta meeting and like make a presentation to like change the dress code any story about people like standing up for what they believe in and like risking the consequences from the powers that be like I am here for that so even if we're just talking about a dress code I, I think the reason this story was like so cute to me was because um in my middle school and high school like my friends and I always used to get in trouble for stuff we wore because the rules were so stupid like you couldn't wear 
a tank top or you couldn't wear some a shirt that showed your back when you leaned over to get into your backpack or whatever like seriously so ridiculous and it is usually the girls that are getting in trouble for stuff so I thought this was so cute I gave it three stars um, honestly, some of these books that are audio, I feel like it's obviously easy to like tune in and out. So sometimes when I'm like coming to the end of an audiobook, I'm like, I wonder if I just like wasn't listening the whole time. Um, and I hate admitting that, but it's happened to me when I'm reading a physical book too. Like I'll just like zone out and be like, wow, I have no idea what I just read on the page, but I'll go back and read it again so I don't know just a thought okay the next book I've had on my list for a while it's called Pet it is a YA novel uh, by Awake Emezi I probably butchered that I'm so sorry okay uh, Aku Akuake Emezi I like that. Oh, Akuake Emezi. I really like that last name. I hope I did not butcher it too much and I apologize. Um, this book was the first one I read on my Nook. Um, this is basically um, about a young girl named Jam and her mom is an artist and makes this painting and when Jam goes to look at the painting there is this monster inside the painting that starts talking to her and it actually comes out of the painting and like into their home and sort of like torments her throughout the book. But there is this underlying plot that like Jam is transgender, I believe. Yes. Um, and so the family is like dealing with um, the monster who is called Pet. But that's sort of like a way for the book to talk about like them dealing with the uh, GM being a transgender. Um, this book honestly was just like all over the place for me. I felt like I had this on my list for a while because I thought the description of it sounded really interesting but some of the reviews people said the book was a little scary. So I was kind of like scared to read it and like there were parts of it that were a little bit um disturbing to read I definitely wouldn't recommend it for like an actual young adult to read um just given the nature of like the of pet and like him coming out of the painting and like some of the visualizations there um but I just on me as a reader always have had a hard time with books that have a lot of characters and or books that have characters with like very different names and so like the main character's name being Jam and they live in a town called Lucille and like the monster's name was Pet like it was all just like jumbling around in my head and I felt like I really just at times could not grasp what was happening in the book so um this was a two stars for me I think I mean, it has a 4.19 on Goodreads, so obviously a lot of people resonated with this story, and I'm glad about that. I wish I would have been one of those people, but I was just like, what is going on? And, like, why the thought of, like, a painting coming to life, like, honestly scares me. Um, so, not for me. The next book I read, or actually listened to, was called The Other's Gold by Elizabeth Ames at Ames. This was also on my list for a while. It's really like a collegiate book. It's about four friends that discover a secret and kind of like how do they move throughout their lives knowing this secret. And the book description does not say what the secret is, obviously. So you learn the secret. I won't give any spoilers, but you learn the secret like in the first couple chapters of the book like they don't make they don't keep you hanging um but like I didn't really think the secret was like that big of a deal like was it enough to make like a whole book out of so after I found out the secret I literally I just felt like the book was like dragging on and on and on and on um 
I gave it two stars. It just really was not for me. Would not recommend. The next book was one I read on my Kindle, or my Nook, Untamed by Glennon Doyle. I know people pissed their pants over with this book, okay? People were like freaking obsessed. I know it was like a bestseller, flying off the shelves, blah, blah, blah. Um, first of all, I don't know if I've ever mentioned this here, but I have a really big like habit of not reading the description of books. I just like, maybe I'll read like the first sentence and like it'll, if it sells me in the first sentence, I'm like, okay, reading it or okay, buying it. And then I read it and I'm like, what the frick was this? Like, so first of all, this is a collection of short stories. It's not a memoir. Um, it's not any sort of long pieces of prose. And um, fun fact about me, I don't like short stories. I don't like short essays. I don't like personal essays, really. I mean, and there's a few writers that like I enjoy. But typically, if it's a collection of short stories or a collection of essays, that's a big no from me, dog. And if I would have known that, I would not have read this book um, because the essays to me, some of them were one page and also, yes, they were put into like sections of the book, but I just thought they were tossed in there willy nilly, not making any sense why she put them in certain orders when like parts of the essays the order mattered in terms of like how she was referring to her marriage or how she was referring to her children and like it just made it all kind of messy for me so that pissed me off and the second thing is um perhaps when she was writing this a lot of this was like groundbreaking information but like women standing up for themselves women taking control over their own life to me is not a groundbreaking idea like we're there and like Thank you, Glennon, for, like, writing this down and inspiring a lot of women, but I just found it to be kind of, like, old news. Um, I still gave it three stars because, like I said, I think it's awesome that people were, like, inspired by this book, If and I am a fan of, like, these types. I am a fan of books that, like, put information in there to, like, validate people and, like, if you if if you needed like a push that you found in this book like that's awesome and I know a lot of people did um there were like a few parts in there where I was like okay yeah it's good but like I said there were parts I didn't appreciate and I also um there were a few essays in there that I felt like were very problematic um just in terms of like her being a white woman and her speaking about race um I just yeah, I'm not going to go into it, but um, I don't think, as a white woman myself, I do not think we need to be preaching to people about race. I think we need to be the ones listening to black women and black men about their experiences, and we need to be learning from them, not writing our opinions in books and making a bunch of money off of it. So that's that on that. And finally, book number eight. Just Mercy by Brian Stevenson. I know a lot of people watch this movie. Um, I gave this four stars. So this and Crying in H Mart were the best books that I read this month. And I do feel like that is an accurate representation. Um, this is a true story. I actually listened to the audio version of this. And it is read by the author, which was awesome. Um, but it's really about how Brian Stevenson founded the Equal Justice Initiative, which is a nonprofit law office in Alabama dedicated to defending the poor and incarcerated and wrongly condemned. But particularly the book um, talks about like the early days of the Justice Initiative and some of the specific cases. And it's just like obviously really heartbreaking stuff, incredibly heavy. Um, but it has so much great information in there about um, the American justice system and like the jails. And one thing that I thought was really interesting was he references Pete Early, which is another really great author if you're looking to learn a lot about um, mental health and the justice system. Um, he has a book called Crazy. 
and it's so informative um, if you're into that sort of um, genre of information. So I thought this book was so good. It, it read or like sounded like fiction, but it's all true. So um, really interesting, and I'm so glad that I got to read that. I will tell you what I'm reading right now. I honestly thought that I read more than eight books this month because I really felt like I was like flying through. Um, but I'm happy with that. I am on track to meet my reading goal. Um, my reading goal is to read 75 books this year and I believe I'm at 43. So right now, um, Right now, I am reading two books. I'm listening to one and reading one on my Nook. The one I'm reading is called One to Watch by Kate Stamen London. That This one is about um, a plus-size woman who like has a blog about like lifestyle and kind of being plus-size. And she always has sort of like criticized a show... Um, that's very similar to like The Bachelor and her criticism led the show to like say hey why don't you be our next contestant and so she is the contestant on this show and it's like about her kind of like dealing with her weight and like the men that are like supposed to be like her boyfriends or whatever um, I'm about halfway through that and it's pretty good so far. And then I'm listening to The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. I know this was like a really, really celebrated novel. Um, I read Britt Bennett's other book, The Mothers, I believe is what it's called. And I really liked that one. Um, but this one, I'm about halfway through the audio and I'm having a lot of trouble with it. Just... I just don't feel attached to this story in any way, so I feel like I'm probably missing something. And I keep listening further to be like, okay, when am I going to catch catch on? Um, but maybe it's just not the book for me. So those are the books that I read in June. Um, like I said, not the way that I really planned my reading to go this year. I originally planned to like follow my book list and I have a giant pile of books in the corner of my living room that I wanted to read and then like either trade those with friends or like donate them because they don't fit on my bookshelf um and I really haven't gotten to like any of those um but just the nature of my work right now I don't have a ton of time to actually read a physical book like audiobook has been sort of like my saving grace I mean six out of the eight books that I read in G um, June were audio so that's just kind of the way it is right now um, I think my situation will change a little bit in the fall so I just have to get through the summer it just might be like the summer of the audiobook for me so um, I would love to hear what you guys are reading and um, what you're planning on reading this summer what you're planning on reading on your vacations by the pool um, and yeah so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for sticking with me, even though I don't know how to edit video or else I wouldn't keep stuff in there like me sneezing. Um, and thanks for putting up with my no makeup um, face and my background of my kitchen and computer. So thank you so much and I will see you next month. Bye.